Following along now, you know that we have a uh, Jupyter Workflow package that we've created. We have a Jupyter Workflow notebook that um, has a number of uh, visualizations in it. And um, one thing that's nice to do next is to, since we've put some tools into this Python package that we want to rely on, um, it's nice to test and make sure that those tools do exactly what um, we want them to do. And one way that you can do that is with something called unit tests. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open a new notebook here and just call it uh, let's call it uh, Scratch. Um, if we want to create unit tests, what unit tests are is it's a way to test a unit of code to make sure that it's actually doing what it advertises it does. So let's say um, from from Jupyter workflow dot data import get Fremont data. I'm going to say data equals get Fremont data. So what we want to do is create a function that will um, examine the output of this function and make sure that it conforms to what we expect it should. So for example, we know that we want the data.columns to be uh, west, east, and total. So let's, um, let's make sure data.columns is equal to that. Uh, it's, we got we to gotta check that all elements of data.columns are columns are equal to that. So if we um, now assert that all of that is true, that's, that's a, an assertion that tests something about the output of the data. The other thing we might do is uh, data.index. Um, it's this long date time thing. So uh, maybe we can say that um, dot, let's say we want type, or we want um, is instance data.index pd.date time index. So we want to make sure that that works. Oh, and of course we have to um, import pandas as pd. If we do that, we can assert, assert that that's true. Um, so there, there are other pieces of this that we might do as well. We might kind of decide to change some of the file name or change the URL or change the input parameters. But just as a, a basic test of functionality, this is kind of um, enough right here. If we run this code, this is kind of this is making sure that the data is what we want it to be. So let's put this in a function called test. Um, Fremont data, and um, then what we could do now that we have this function is we could um, run this run this this test Fremont data function, and um, and uh, once it once it executes once it gets the data and does the assertions, then if it doesn't have any errors, we know that our code is operating as expected. Now the problem is you don't want to have to manually run all these test functions. So, so there are things called unit test frameworks that let you run all those functions um, automatically. And one that I like is called PyTest. If you, you go here, there's documentation on PyTest and how to do that. Um, there's also unit test and nose tests, and there, there's various unit testing frameworks in Python. But for sake of example, we're, we'll work with PyTest. And the way that you would um, use this with PyTest is you can make a directory called Jupyter Workflow slash tests um, and then you can open a file in Jupyter Workflow slash tests and I and as long as you start it with the word test it's fine and I usually like to um, organize it by since we're testing the data file I'm going to say test data dot py um, and what once we have that file we can just take this code right here and drop it into that file save it and close it. And now what we should do, uh, if we do git status, we see that we have that Jupyter workflow tests in there. And now what we can do is invoke pytests and do python minus m pytest. That's a nice way to do it. And say we want to test everything in the Jupyter workflow package. And what this does now is it goes through and you can see that it actually it goes through and collects items and it finds that there's a test function in this testdata.py file. And it runs that function and then make sure that all the assertions pass. And it tells us that one function passed. And now this took um, 10 seconds. And the reason that is is because our parse dates um, functionality for the file, when we're reading in the dates and turning them into date time objects, is too slow. Um, so the nice thing about unit tests is now we can go back and we can start to refactor 
um, that function and try to speed that up because it's a little bit annoy annoying to have to wait 10 seconds every time you load this data. But we can refactor that and we can make sure that the output of that is consistent even with our, with our new function. So before we move on to that in the next video, um, we definitely want to commit these things, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore the scratch notebook. We don't really want to save that. But if we do git add Jupyter workflow slash tests slash um, testdata.py. I'm also going to make a make file just because sometimes it's, it's uh, hard to remember what the, the test invocation is. So I'm going to say the, the test invocation is uh, python minus m pytest jupyter workflow. And so now if I type, um, if I go here and I type make test, it'll um, run that command and do it for me, right? So, um, of course, we have to wait 10 seconds again. So I can uh, git add the make file. Um, and yeah, now we have all that. So I'm going to git commit minus m add pytest fra framework and push or origin master and um, now we have those tests on there so in the next video if you continue with this I'm gonna go in and refactor that download function so that we um, we parse the dates a little bit more efficiently and so that these tests run more quickly